Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Maureen Karajanis and today I'm going to read a very favorite book of mine called Zen Socks by John J. Muth. It's also a favorite of my grandchildren. Leo and Molly sat on the porch of their new home. Look, said Leo, it's going to happen again. Yep, it's almost time, said Molly. What's his name again, said Leo? Mr. Quiet Puddle? Stillwater, said Molly. Isn't that our cat riding in the basket of his bicycle, asked Molly. I like his hat, said Leo. I like his bicycle, said Molly. Oof, I like this neighborhood, said Leo. Hi, Stillwater, said Molly. That is our cat. Is it, said Stillwater. I know your cat. Today he asked to go for a ride. Really, said Leo. I didn't even know he liked riding bicycles. Yes, and he sometimes likes to come over and sleep on the moss under the cherry tree, said Stillwater. That's his name, said Molly. Cherry tree, said Stillwater. Moss, said Molly. Ah, moss. Nice to know your name, said Stillwater. The next day, Molly went to visit Stillwater. Moss would like to know if you want to dance with me, said Molly. Oh, yes, I would, said Stillwater. My auntie is a ballet dancer, said Molly. I really want to be one, too. I think that would be wonderful, said Stillwater. I will practice all day, and then I will be as good as my auntie, said Molly. Good. Practice is very important, said Stillwater. And then I will do shows on stage and I'll get flowers and lots of blue ribbons and tiaras and my name will be on posters with lots of glitter, said Molly. Well, that might take more than one day, said Stillwater. Yeah, Molly shrugged, maybe two days. Stillwater paused and said, let me tell you a story. The Tale of Banzo's Sword. There was once a young fellow named Jiro. Jiro wanted to be a great swordsman just like his father. So he packed his things and went to Mount Futara to find the famous swordsman Banzo. You wish to learn swordsmanship under my guidance, asked Banzo. Yes, said Jiro. If I work very hard, how long will it take me to become a master? Oh. I see that you cannot become a sword master, said Bonzo, and he turned to go. But, pleaded Joe, I, I will pass through any hardship, anything you say. How long then? Bonzo looked at Jiro. Oh, maybe ten years. My father's getting old. I want to show him I'm a great swordsman like him. If I work even more intensely, how long would it take? Ah, well then... Maybe 30 years, said Banzo. Wait, said Jiro. First you said 10 years, and then you said 30 years. I want to master this art now. I am willing to work as hard as I must. Hmm, I see, said Banzo. In that case, you will have to work for 70 years. A person in such a hurry seldom gets good results. Jiro looked at Banzo and understood he was being rebuked for his impatience. Very well, he said respectfully. I would like to learn from you for as long as you can teach me. Jiro was told never to speak of fencing and never to touch a sword. Instead, he cooked for the master. He washed the dishes, he made his bed, he cleaned the yard, he cared for the garden. All without a word of swordsmanship. Three years passed. Then one day, Banzo crept up behind and gave him a whack with a big wooden spoon. The following day, when Jiro was cooking rice, Banzo again sprang upon him unexpectedly and hit him with a broom. 
and then later with a wooden sword. After that, day and night, Jiro had to defend himself from unexpected thrusts. He learned to live on the balls of his feet, ready to dodge at any moment. Not a day passed that he did not have to think of the taste of Banzo's sword. Now you are ready to learn, Banzo told him. Soon Master Banzo began lessons and Jiro learned so rapidly he made his master smile. In time, Jiro became the greatest swordsman in the land. When Stillwater finished, Molly looked at him. I think I understand, she said. I'm not being patient. I will practice as long as it takes. Excellent, said Stillwater. If you can do that, I'm sure you will become a great dancer. A few days later, Leo visited Stillwater. Hi, Stillwater, said Leo, let's play. What are we going to play today? Asked Stillwater. Giant robots, said Leo. I brought your favorites. You brought Blue Lightning Man and Sis Boom Ba, asked Stillwater excitedly. Yup, said Leo proudly. I'll be the good guys and you be the bad guys. Great, said Stillwater. I love the bad guys. But first, said Stillwater, have a cookie. But don't take that one. I want to eat that one. It's the biggest. Oh, and, and don't take that one. It has more chips. I like a lot of chips. They're my favorite. Here, you have this one. It is small and broken. No, wait, this one is even smaller. Stillwater, said Leo, you are keeping all the good ones for yourself. That's mean. There are only five cookies. I want to be sure I get the best ones, said Stillwater. But you are being selfish, said Leo. You are being a bad guy. Stillwater bowed, and he held the plate out for Leo. This is right. Please take whichever cookie you like. Have you ever wanted all the best cookies for yourself, asked Stillwater? Leo nodded. Hmm, I have two, said Stillwater. I guess bad guys don't always think they are being bad guys, said Leo. This is our struggle, said Stillwater, thinking if we are we all get the best thing for ourselves, we will be happier. Stillwater picked up his robot. Okay, let's play. I'm a bad guy. Oh, wait, said Leo. No, no good guys, no bad guys. Follow me. And they went through the kitchen and into the green of the backyard. Let's go on a quest together with our robot, said Leo. We'll explore the green bamboo galaxy. Maybe someone is lost and we can rescue them. One bright weekend morning, the four friends decided to go to the beach. What shall we do? asked Molly. Burying you might take a long time, said Leo. You are probably right, said Stillwater. Let's go for a walk. Stillwater, look at the starfish, said Molly. Where did they all come from, asked Leo. Starfish, what are you doing here, asked Molly. There are so many, said Stillwater, and the tide is going out. What will happen, asked Leo. They will dry out in the sun and perish. Molly picked up a starfish and threw it back into the ocean. That's good, Molly, said Leo. They began picking up the starfish one by one and throwing them back into the water. After a while, Leo said, there are too many. This won't make a difference. Molly picked up another starfish and threw it back into the ocean. It made a difference to him, she said. Three of the four friends were very tired. The sun was going down. The beach had no more stars. Wow, said Leo, we did it. Molly smiled. 
Still water. Look up, she said. Stars. Thank you.